Hey, this Walter here, and a uh, question from a naked trader. This is a trader who's read the Naked Forex book, and he asks, which, uh, I've been trading the lower time frames with your strategies, like the Big Shadow, Kangaroo Tales, and so forth, Moolah, Whammy, and he says, I'm moving to the four hour charts, which strategy should I use? Now, uh, this is an interesting question, and it comes up quite a bit, and people say, like, what kind of win rate, or what, you know, what kind of expectancy does this system have? Um, there are a lot of things that go into that, and I think this is actually the wrong question to ask. And with all respect, I think really the question we want to ask here is what's the best system for me, okay? So what I mean by that is how does the system trade – what's the system trader match like? What What is it? Is there a match here? And the reason why I say this is because – I've tested traders all around the world, given them a test, and I've tried to figure out what type of trader uh, they are because I, I want to point them in the right direction. So when traders come in and come into our private forum, I say, you know, you should probably take a look at this course. It has this test in there. It'll show you what kind of trader you are. And, you know, what we find is that overwhelmingly most traders actually are likely to look for turning points. So when, like for example, here's the Aussie yen. The Aussie yen's been making higher highs and higher lows. Most traders would be looking for a reason to sell this pair. Most traders wouldn't be looking to buy. Now it doesn't mean that you are as well, but you have to kind of keep that in mind. And in terms of your expectancy of a strategy or the overall payout or the win rate or all that, you know, win rate is going to fluctuate with your rules. If you have a 10R standing target where you risk 50 pips to make 500, that's going to be a fairly low win rate strategy. But most, but the good news is, uh, if it makes money, those winners are going to wipe out so many losers. In fact, they can wipe out 10 of them. <laughs> so that's the thing to keep in mind here is that you kind of dictate the, the uh, obviously, the exit rules that you use, and that will dictate the win rate. Now, as far as going to the four-hour charts, all of the strategies can work. It really is going to depend on what makes sense to you. Now, if you're trading the, this is the two-day chart right here. So I like I like trading the two-day chart, the 12-hour chart, the eight-hour chart, simply because I don't like to look at the charts. Like, I don't, I don't like to do a lot of of uh, you know fluffing around and, and, and concentrating on, on watching the charts. I'm much better at coming and checking the charts maybe three or four times a day. That, that's all I really want to do. I don't want to sit here and watch the chart for a long time. So um, what I would say is that isn't that magical that the, that the market just came right up here and touched that level? Isn't that interesting? Also interesting, before I forget, is that you can get into the Small Accounts Big Profits course. It's still open. You can click the link below this video or just go to bigprofitscourse.com to learn all about that, that strategy, what we're doing, how we're going to grow the little $1,000 account. All that stuff is in uh, on that page for you if you'd like to learn more about that. Okay. What I would say is that you need to test it in Forex Tester. You need to figure out which ones make sense to you, uh, what kind of strategy you want, you want to use if you're a runner or a gunner. I talk about in Naked Forex being a runner, which is you know kind of going for those big wins, and being a gunner where you're trying to get out rather quickly and kind of sniper-like in and out. Um, you can do both, of course, because, of course, when you're a gunner, and then those trades end up really running. You kick yourself, go, oh, I only got 35 pips out of that. And look, it's already gone 400 pips. Or vice versa, when you go, oh, man, I was really, you know, I was using this trailing exit on this thing. I was hoping it would really run, but it actually only went 50 pips. If I'd just taken profit there, I would have made, you know, a big chunk out of the move. And instead, it's come now against me. So, you know, you, ha you really have to decide which one of those is more painful. The, the pain of missing out on a real run or, um, you know, the pain of having a lot of trades where, you, you know, the market goes in your favor, but you give back quite a bit on the trailing exit. So it, it really kind of depends on you. But I would, I would not look to me or other traders to tell you you should do this or you should do that. Whenever you see a trader say, you should use this strategy, it's the best strategy, you should run for the hills. That is not the right approach. You are always going to come back to what you believe in in your trading. And if you don't believe me, try it, because I've done it. <laughs> I've gone off. I've tried all different things, everything under the sun, from uh, moving averages and stochastics and MACDs and RSI and ADX and 
uh, Ichimoku and uh, you know all that stuff. I pretty much come back to support and resistance. Now you can use moving averages for support and resistance. You can use trend lines for support and resistance. There's lots of things you can use for support and resistance. But I just want to be really clear here. If you really want to make you know a strategy that you're going to stick to, it should be something you believe in. So you can find big shadows on any time frame. We can find them here on the two-day charts. Here's one right here. Uh, there's one right there. Uh, that is not a bearish one there. I don't have any ones there. Um, and I'll, I can just as easily find them on the... Uh, on the uh, uh, there's a uh, kangaroo tail there. Didn't work out, but that was a kangaroo tail. Sort of a trendy, although... Trendy kangaroo tails aren't, I aren't ideally in that sort of situation. Trendy kangaroo tails are usually on a pullback. Um, not usually after a double top or potential double top. Here, let me show you what it looks like. This is the, the pound. Let me show you what the pound looks like on the four hour. And you'll see the exact same setups. The most important thing, I guess, to, to keep in mind when you're, when you're switching time frames, the higher the time frame, the fewer the trades. There's a big shadow right there. So that's kind of a double top moolah big shadow there. Um, there's one technically right there. Uh, let's see what else do we have? Any others? Any others? I guess technically there's one right there too. I don't like the wiki ones though. I like the ones that have mostly body. Let's see. Do we have any more? That's technically one right there. Doesn't have a lot of space. There's a kangaroo tail right there that didn't work out. Obviously the, the sell stop was never triggered anyway, so doesn't really matter. There's a bullish big shadow right there. As is there, as is there. Looking for some bearish ones, actually. I was hoping I could give you some more bearish examples, but we don't seem to have any. This is a beautiful one right here. So this didn't end up being a trendy kangaroo tail, but this is where you would look for them. After a little bit of a bullish flag, you get the trendy kangaroo tail right there. Problem is this closed too high to make one, but if it had closed a little bit earlier, like on a three-hour candle, maybe it was a trendy kangaroo tail. Here is uh no, that's not one. The, the low isn't low enough there. But you get, yeah, there's one. You get the idea. Here's a trendy kangaroo tail here with a tiny little bit of space. The market does not trigger after one, two candles, and then boom, you get your trendy big shadow, which was awesome. That was a good one. So you're going to find them everywhere. The most important thing to keep in mind is when you draw your zones, make sure that you use the higher time frame and you don't want to see every other candle hit the zone. If every other candle hits your zone, you know you've drawn too many zones. That's the biggest issue I see with traders who are starting to throw support resistance on the chart. If you're using horizontal support resistance, like most of my you know videos have shown you, you probably don't want to go ahead and you know have it so that every single you know every other candle shouldn't hit. It should be kind of rare. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Like here, let's take a look at this daily chart. So I put the daily chart on here and then I'm going to draw my pound because I'm trading the four hour, right? So I go, okay, here are my levels. I got my support down there. Let me just kind of back it up here, get really clear about where my levels are. It's going to be one right there. That's a beauty. Looks like we're he actually headed there, doesn't it? Right now as I record this. That's another beauty, support, support, resistance, resistance, resistance. We got ultimate support down here. Uh, we're going to have some more up here in case we get up here. It, doesn't, it looks like we're actually headed lower now, but we never know. It might turn around and get up here and there. So look, this is really what we're looking at here. We're looking at some really lovely support and resistance levels based on the line chart. Okay, daily line chart. Now... And there's going to be one in the middle here, probably, I'd say, right about there. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and draw in our, or, or drop down to our four-hour our candles. Now what should happen is that the four-hour candles don't touch at every other candle. You know, like that, that should be kind of a rare thing, and it is. It hit it a couple times up here. Touched it here. There's a there's a there's a classic pinch. By the way, my you know one of the things that's great about working with traders is I learn other strategies, how other traders trade, like the pinch from Denny. He taught us that in the in the private forum. Boom, um, you know, uh, system one and two by uh, Emmanuel and and Nicola. Uh, all these things that have come from working with other traders. So it's really really fun for me 
to um, learn from other traders as well. It's a two-way street. So this is pretty cool. So this looks like based on the daily support and resistance that we're the pound is currently headed for support. Now remember, if you look at your open position ratios as I'm recording this, you'll see that the pound is actually negative. So it's 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 slightly bearish right now because there's slightly more than 65% of the traders are long the pound. So that means we have a bearish bias. So it could break through this quite easily, but I'm just pointing out that this is what you would look like. If you're trading a four-hour chart, this is what you want to see. You want to see it occasionally tag your levels, occasionally give you a signal, but not every, you know, every day sort of thing. So there you have it. So I hope that helps. I wish you happy trading. And if you'd like to join us in small accounts, big profits, you can. Just uh, click the link below this video or go to bigprofitscourse.com to learn more about our small uh, $1,000 account, wrapping it up to hundred grand, and we're going to do that using these money management techniques and using a lot of the strategies that we talk about here and, and other places like in the private forum. We're doing that in the course. So if you'd like to follow along and if you'd like to get access to that uh, risk algorithm that we're using, you can through the link. Otherwise, I'll catch you in another video. See ya. Bye.